Hey everybody, I have a big announcement to make and that is we are bringing on a brand new co-host. Mike Johnson is still very much a co-host of the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast, but periodically, Andy Ellis, who is the operating partner over at Wild Ventures and has been a CISO for a very, very long time, is gonna be joining us on a regular basis on the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast. Andy, welcome to be a regular part of the show. Thanks for having me, David. I am really excited to be joining the show. The show, for those of you who have not heard it before, is all about the relationship between vendors and practitioners, and also uh, the job of being a cybersecurity leader. And I think that's what I'm most looking to you for. Your first day being a CISO and your last day being a CISO, what was the biggest change for you? Oh my goodness, the biggest change across that span. Like 20 years, isn't it? Yeah, right. The, the first day I didn't have the title CISO, right? I was just the senior security person. The term probably hadn't come around yet. It, it hadn't come no. around. And in fact, I was called the CISO long before I even had that title. Uh, you know, it actually almost sort of had to extort the title out by telling sales they couldn't write down that my title was CISO since I hadn't officially been given it yet. But if I go back to that first day was how little I knew and how little anyone knew. Mm -hmm. There was no structure. Uh, I came in and I thought I was doing one job and every day I'd get surprised. It's like, oh, you're doing an audit next week. And I'm like, what's an audit? <laughs> uh, the amount of space that we understand better and that we have practitioners who specialize in so you don't have to be able to do it all. I think that's the single biggest change I've seen. We are becoming smarter at some things. What do you think that is? So I think we're a lot smarter at operations. When I look across the anti-fraud uh, side of the industry, especially you look at what financial services and retail is doing, that's an operational task that I think people have really specialized in, not just doing the day-to-day, -day, like look at an alert and figure it out, but do the intelligence and then bring it back to operations. You know, one of the things we try to do on this show is to try to help groom the next level of cybersecurity leaders. And I'm sure you've done some of that yourself, maybe done some mentorship, yes? Absolutely. What is some of the most common things you find yourself saying? It really depends on the person. For some people, you know, it's going to be, don't think about the next role. Think about two roles out because then it's okay to be afraid. For the people who are branching out, completely different advice, which is find whatever you're weakest in and work on that because that's really what's going to limit you. What is it that you saw that said, oh, this person's ready? Again, it's unique to each person, which is really important. In fact, from a management perspective, there is no one rubric for managing yeah. people. And so don't do that. You know, For some people, it was when I had a crisis and I didn't know what to do, I could give them the problem and they would go do something. But there's another caliber of people who I knew if I asked them to do work and they said, yes, I never had to follow up. They would make sure they came back to me. And that's a person that I know is going to go really far in the industry because they're always going to be learning, whereas the people who hide their mistakes never learn from them. And isn't that part of hiring a team is to reduce often your own stress level? Absolutely. And in fact, once you hire people to take that work off of you that's creating stress for you, what you find is that you give them less stress. So if you're an architect who gets promoted into management and now you're responsible for compliance, and you're stressing about compliance, hire people who are program managers, who are librarians, who are skilled at compliance, because they're not going to stress about compliance the way you are. And the things that stress them are the things you're really good at. Create that balanced set of skills to reduce stress. I could not agree more on that. It's what makes a team really function is when you can combine your weakness with somebody else's strength and you create this sort of alloy that is better than the sum of its parts. That is the kind of advice you're going to get when you listen to the Andy Ellis episodes of the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast and also the Mike Johnson episodes as well. I am so thrilled to have you on board the show. For those you don't know, the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast comes out every Tuesday. We do five random segments on each episode. Each usually has the game, the what's worst game smack dab in the middle of it. So make sure you tune in. Just go to CISOseries.com and subscribe to the podcast. Thanks for having you on board, Andy. Thanks for having me. And I get to say, you know, longtime guest, first time host.